Shalom brothers and sisters and welcome to this Sabbath day. Sabbath day where we come to worship our Lord and, and God Saviour. And uh, today we're going to look at how how we uh, share the sacrament. And uh, in our church we have the two sacrament prayers. In the community of Christ they have a combined prayers. But I like to... Kyle to share with you from the Jerusalem Bible from Luke 22 and 20. So this is talking about the Last Supper and uh, and the way that Jesus shared the sacrament. So over to you Kyle. Good morning brothers and sisters. This is a verse from St Luke, the institution of the Holy Sacrament. Then he took the bread, then he took some bread, and when he had given thanks, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which will be given for you. Do this as a memorial of me. He then proceeded to do the same thing with the cup after the supper, and said, This is the cup. This cup is, a, is the new covenant in my blood which will be poured out for you. Amen. Yeah, thanks for that, Carl. So there's many ways that people uh, prayers for the sacrament. And uh, when we do the sacrament, I'm going to use the... We normally use the, the LDS Mormon Church or Community of Christ Church double prayer, but we're going to do the combined prayer today. So... We're preparing for Christmas now, and uh, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna light a candle for peace today. Ah, oh, that one. We're also like to just engage. Yeah. <laughs> so we've yeah we've lit the candle for peace today, and I'm I'm, I'm gonna pray that there be peace all over the world today. Uh, We can all live in peace. We've all got the capability of love. It just means that we need to get together and have compassion for each other. So in our prayers, we, we think of those people that are in wars or in conflicts. And we pray that there can be peace in, in this. When people come together, when people get, have compassion with each other. So today we pray for peace in Ukraine and Russia. So if you bow your heads, we'll, we'll say it. Loving Creator God, we thank you for this time that we come on this Sabbath day. We pray that your spirit is with us today. We pray that your spirit is with those fighting in wars, Lord. And at this time we think of the Russia-Ukraine war. We think of all those family that, and all those men that are under rule of leaders that are tyrannical or, or that want to war, Lord. We pray that they will be safe and that you will get into the leaders' hearts, that they will stop war and that there will peace. We pray for those families that have lost loved ones and we pray for those families that people are injured, that you can bring those families back together in peace. And I say these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. So we've got, we've got tomorrow because it's Christmas. We've got a carol service, uh, Community of Christ, which is a church I attend, and uh, we're looking forward to that tomorrow. And uh, as we get to this festive time, um, we look forward. We know the dates are not right on, but it's to celebrate Jesus. 
And some, with some people, that's the only time they think about Jesus is at Christmas. So we uphold Christmas as well. So, right, we're going to go into the sacrament now, and I hope you have your emblems ready and your why. And as I said today, uh, we're going to do something a bit different and use Community of Christ combined prayer. At this time, we welcome all present to Christ's table. We invite all who would participate to do so as an expression of the peace and love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we worship. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament, a time to focus on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we renew our covenants and recommit together to His mission, to grow closer to Jesus Christ, as individuals and as a community, worshipping Jesus Christ through God's Word, the sacraments, ministry, outreach, Kabbalah, and Jubilee. We encourage all that are worthy to receive communion to do so frequently and devoutly. <coughs> so, if you'd like to bow or kneel, whatever's okay for you, as we prepare for the prayer, the combined prayer. And this is based on Doctrine and Covenant 16. O God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread and wine to the souls of all those who partake of them, that they may drink in remembrance, they may eat and drink in the rem remembrance of the body and the blood of thy Son, and witness unto thee, O God the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments, which he has given them, that they may always have the Spirit to be with them. Amen. Amen. So, there's another combined prayer, and I would like Kyle to read that one. Eternal God, we ask you, in the name of your Son Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread and wine to the souls of all those who receive them, that they may eat and drink in remembrance of the body and blood of your Son, and witness unto you, O God, that they are willing to take upon them the name of your Son, and always remember him, and keep the commandments which he had given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. Amen. Today's message, I want to talk to you about why we need Jesus as the Christ. And I'm going to start off by reading a scripture. This is Luke 14, 11. But whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Now, this is a very personal topic for me, because... I grew up in a very Protestant area, and people would always attack me for being Mormon, saying, you know, well, just because your your church, the church you belong to, has the name of Jesus Christ, and it doesn't mean that you are a Christian. Because they had this false idea that we had to go through Joseph Smith or whoever was the president of that church at that time to get to God. And in, in some senses, when you look at Protestantism, you know, their theology versus Latter-day Saint theology, I can kind of see where they're coming from, but I genuinely believe that Joseph Smith's idea 
was, I mean, when you read a lot of his quotes, he talked quite a bit about this idea that we're supposed to go to God for ourselves. When Nephi had his vision where he talked to an angel of the Lord about the dream that his father Lehi had, and towards the end of it, he says, you know, there's more stuff that I'm not telling you. But I would encourage you to go to God on your own to receive these revelations. And also check out what we call the Gospel, I'm sorry, not the Gospel, the Revelation of John at the back of the New Testament, last book of the New Testament. And we're supposed to be a prophetic people. We're supposed to be seeking our own understanding of things through the Holy Spirit, through prophecy and revelation. I've talked about this before, this idea that the whole point of the Book of Mormon is to lead people to Christ by unlocking that spiritual power of prophecy and revelation. And then as special witnesses of Christ, because the Holy Spirit has testified to us of the reality of Jesus Christ, we're all prophets and prophetesses. We're not just saying, hey, I like the stuff I'm reading in the New Testament. This sounds good. We have a spiritual witness where God himself, the Holy Spirit, has testified to us of the reality of Jesus Christ. And the problem that I see within our movement, and not just our movement, a Christianity in general, I should say, is people getting to a point where they think they've graduated, if you will, from needing a Savior, from needing Jesus Christ. Now, Paul, in the book of Romans, talks about this idea of us being joint heirs with Christ. If we're joint heirs, that means that we're receiving something with Jesus, not on our own. And I don't believe that we ever can receive anything on our own. The reason why I believe that the Lord titled this particular movement, The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and this particular ecumenical movement, The Church of Jesus Christ in Christian Fellowship, is as a reminder that we are a church, which means not an organization, but a people united in Jesus Christ, working together in Jesus Christ as saints in the latter days, latter day saints, and as Christians fellowshipping a Christian fellowship. So we have to have Jesus Christ. We don't get to a point there where we evolve past him or beyond him. He will always be our father in the sense of our salvation and will always be our Savior. Jesus is the pinnacle. When it, when it talks about that idea that the, you know, the easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than to go through, than a rich man to get into heaven, I believe that that eye of the needle is Jesus Christ. The camel can make it through there because of the atonement of Jesus Christ. Whether you want to, I know there's a couple different ideas of what that scripture means. The needle, some people say, is actually a term for a small spot where camels are supposed to walk in to get into Jerusalem, to get into cities in general. And it also could actually be the little hole that the string goes through. Either way, it, it's something that's not particularly easy, but we can definitely do, but not on our own. We do it through Jesus Christ. Whenever we get into portions of any movement that start talking about Jesus Christ as a man, just like us, who has no special things about him that we can eventually become as well, then we've moved away from the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus said that before he came here, he was I am. And he almost got stoned for saying, you know, that he is the son of God. I know that there are some Latter-day Saints that believe that he was the physical son of Mary and Joseph. And I know that on the other side, there are Latter-day Saints that believe that he was the physical son of God the Father and Mary. And then there's those that meet in the middle and go with what the Bible and Book of Mormon say that we don't really know, but somehow Mary became impregnated by the Holy Ghost. I, I don't think that that part is really that important. But I think what is important is the understanding that in the pre-mortal world, before he was born, he was already God. And the Jews were already worshipping him. 
he was already as Jehovah, Yahweh, or as I say, Yavah. He was already the God of Israel. He was already the God that we as Israelites made a pact with, a covenant with, to be the chosen people. So today as Christians, we are making the same pact as Israel that the Israelites made to be the covenant people. We don't make that covenant with the father or with the mother. We make it with Jesus Christ. And this is important to me also because even in, in the fellowship itself, you know, Christine had a revelation. If you haven't read it, it's uh, on the at the bottom, not the footer, but just above the footer on the main page, Together in Sisterhood. And she worked with some sisters to try to organize a sisterhood. And there was a little bit of confusion, not with everybody, but there was a little bit of confusion as priestesses, were they representing Jesus or were they representing Heavenly Mother? Well, as a man, I don't represent God the Father. As a, as, a, as a priest, as an elder, as a high priest, I represent Jesus Christ. And the priestesses, elders and high priestesses, also represent Jesus Christ. Because he is the advocate with the Father and the Mother. There is no bypassing that. There is no getting around that. There is no separate priesthood that somehow isn't involved with Jesus Christ. Now, I know that these Sabbath messages are supposed to be the milk and the, the Thursday thoughts can be the meat, if you will. So if I'm getting too deep into theology here, I apologize. But to me, this is simplicity itself. We are growing in the grace of Jesus Christ, through the atonement of Jesus Christ, in the church of Jesus Christ. This is all about Jesus Christ. There is no other path. There is no other way to return back to our heavenly parents except through him. And when you've had your calling and election made sure, you're a joint heir. You're still there with Jesus Christ. You'll, we, none of us, will ever be on the same footing as Jesus. I don't say this to condemn anyone, to condone anyone. If you believe something different, I, I want you to know that I support you in your beliefs. I want you to know that you're welcome to fellowship with us. As, as a member or part of the ecumenical movement that is the Fellowship of Christ. The Church of Jesus Christ and Christian Fellowship. I don't want to create an us versus them situation here. What I do want to do is share my testimony with you of the reality, the divinity, and the importance of Jesus Christ and Jesus as the Christ to our salvation, to our ministries, to our discipleship. When we talk about people being seekers, what are they seeking? Truth? That's Jesus Christ. Light? It's the light of Christ. But Moroni, I'm sorry, yeah, Moroni says in the Book of Mormon, it's all about coming to Christ. So again, you don't have to agree with what I'm saying here. But I want you to understand my perspective and in my opinion, what we're doing here as a fellowship. Fellowshipping as Christians in the name of Jesus Christ. I, I will share with you that when I went through my, I don't know, I guess you'd call it a trial to be excommunicated from uh, Salt Lake City Church, one of the things that I was accused of was being a billboard for Jesus. That really surprised me because I thought that when I was a member of their church before I left and then before I was excommunicated, that that was the whole point. I thought that's why that their missionaries had a little name badge that said in really big letters, Jesus Christ. Because that's the whole point. We're all supposed to be billboards of Jesus Christ. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But I, I hope that I can live up to what I was accused of in that moment. I pray 
that I can do so in a way that blesses the lives of others and helps others come to Jesus Christ and feel of his love, partake of his, of his grace, and take part in his atonement. Because what is the atonement? But making all of us one again. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints as a movement isn't about an organization. It's about creating Israel so that we can all come home through Jesus Christ back to the God that created us, who again, in the temporal form, was, I am, who is Jesus Christ. Our Heavenly Parents, this is again my view of things, may be the father and mother of our spirits. Jesus Christ, as the creator, is the father of this creation. And as a born-again Christian, the father of my soul and our souls. I want to testify to you that he is real, that he loves you, that he wants you to be a part of him, to be a joint heir with him. He wants you to return back to our heavenly parents once again. And he's done everything in his power as the God that he is to help get us there. All he asks of us is to accept him, befriend him, know him, and grow in his grace, enduring till the end. So that's my message for you this week. I hope you have a blessed Sabbath. And we'll talk again soon. I say these things to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So that concludes our sacrament for today. So as we take time and think on this week and... Uh, We think about all the prayers we say on a on a Wednesday that that ago. So the prayer meetings Wednesday night, seven o'clock England time, and I think it's two o'clock USA time. Uh, so we just like to say thank you for your presence being with us on this Sabbath day, and we wish you. a a very blessed week and Shalom be with you. Peace be with you all. Shalom, brothers. Shalom.